and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 111, to be read in response to by half verse. Great are the deeds of the Lord. His work is full of majesty and splendor. And his righteousness forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He has he has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the land of his nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The jubilatum is uh, a brief, uh, yes. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is the He himself has made us, and we are his We are his sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates into thanksgiving. The New Testament reading is found from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven us, or you. And over all these virtues, put on love. In your hearts, since as members of one body, you, are, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalm, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. The canticle from the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dwelt upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people. 
hope for you, O Lord of Christ, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to your brightness of your dawn. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Lord of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call on your own salvation, and all of your mortals praise. The sun will no more be light as by day. By night you will need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or fields, for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Good morning, everyone. I know I'm probably not a face you normally see, and thank you for your patience. Um, it's been a it's been a, a a year or two since I've done morning prayer, so I might be a little rusty. Just bear with me, uh, if you will. Um, the meditation on the saints that we had this uh, today, uh, this being uh, the 17th of April, is uh, a Mary Molly Brandt. Um, and Mary Molly Brandt, or as, as her Native American name would be called, is uh, Kanwadsi Jeannie. I think I'm saying that right. Correct me if I'm wrong later, but... <laughs> Kawasa Jenny, and she was a very instrumental uh, woman in the uh, Iroquois Confederation of uh, Native American women in the New York, Ohio Valley, um, the northern part of the United States. Um, she was born in, I believe it's around 1736 in the, in the Ohio uh, country to a Peter and Margaret Tahan. And uh, she was very instrumental in that in, in the Native American society, they had, there is a tendency to be a strong matriarchal community and where the, the women are the, the brains, I would say, and the, uh, um, the, the leaders of the the time and the men are the muscles. Um, well, everybody looks at uh, Joseph, her brother, who was uh, four years younger than, than her, and they think, you know, they, they, they assume that he was the leader, but uh, most of the time they see her, they see him, and he's, he's just the muscle, and, and she's the one that's doing all the um, working with the nations, the Mohawk people, and working with the um, Tribes, making sure that there's peace, making sure that there's, you know, a contingency among amongst the uh, the different tribes there of Indians, which she represented. Um, she was a part of the, the, I believe it was the Five Nations, and uh, in, in about 1954, uh, they had moved. They had sent a uh, confederation. 
uh, so, excuse me, 1754, I get my years mixed up. Uh, 1754, they had sent a, uh, a, a fleet of confederation over to Philadelphia to meet with the Americans at the time, uh, to meet with them and, and trying to negotiate some form of peace, some form of, so they could stay and have their, you know, keep on, keep their land. Um, and this, this was the, she was instrumental in trying to help translate because uh, she was native uh, in Mohawk as well as English. Uh, she was uh, baptized as, as, an Ang as an Anglican and around that, uh, around, it, I believe it was 1754, yes. Um, and then in 1782 is when they sent the Confederation over there uh, to talk with them. Um, she had, uh, on, this, on this journey, she had met a, a British uh, super, uh, superintendent, supervisor of the time by the name of Sir William Johnson. And uh, they fell madly in love, and she was about 19 years of age, 1920, somewhere. And uh, this marriage, or common law marriage that they had at the time, would uh, birth together nine, different, nine children, uh, all of which served in some form of capacity, except for one, um, in trying to help uh, the Mohawk Nation and the, the, uh, the Americans that, that were there, or the, the colonists that were there in, in that time. During the, during that, uh, the conflict, Johnson died in 1784. Uh, after they had married and, and had children. In uh, 1777, they were relocated to uh, the Niagara area where Niagara Falls is around there. Uh, they, her and, and some of the people uh, to help work out the dipl diplomacy between the, the British Canadians and the, um, the colonists at the time. Um, they, they, she was a strong supporter of uh, the, the British um, occupancy, as well as uh, being one of the founding members of our Sir George's Anglican Church in Kingston, Ontario. Um, following her husband's death, the Anaitas and the Americans, in retaliation for her loyalty to the British and to the Anglican Church, they destroyed her home. She and her children fled and were protected by the principal chief of the Five Nations, uh, whose leaders uh, represented her word and counsel. We go, up, we, we go on and we see where that uh, in 1781, the British Canadians built her a, uh, a home there in the, the Niagara area. Um, and she received an annual pension of 100 pounds which is, you know, maybe not a lot to us today, but it's just, uh, it was a, for her, it was very significant. Uh, and then she passed away on April the 16th, 1796. The interesting part about her life is that she moved from, from being a, not, not one that you would see as a, uh, a, a leader or a uh, significant uh, person of interest because she, she wasn't royal in Native American birth or royal Indian birth. She didn't have the pedigree, but yet she was able to move into that, that role to be able to be a very instrumental in her negotiations with uh, the, Amer the colonists as well as the, the British before the American Revolution. And so we see that she is, she's very instrumental in that uh, even though that they go in and they burn her house down and they destroy and they, uh, the colonists take her land and they, they do with it what they will and they, they send her off up to Niagara and they, they try to, she, she encountered a lot of um, she counted a lot of aggression from the Americans because of her loyalist 
to the British crown and the Anglican faith. We see that when she, in, in encountering, encountering some of these things, <coughs> her, her faith in God and her faith in, in, in helping her people, um, they sided with the British because they wanted to be able to keep their land and they feared, just as we see with the Trail of Tears later on in the 1800s. From, we see that you know they pushed the Native Americans out of their land. Through all of this, through the, the death of her children or through the death of her husband, through the death of, and all these horrific things of having to be uprooted and house burned and land taken away and then being pushed off, she still retained her faith. Um, and in 1986, they, uh, they erected a statue in her honor in, in Kinsworth with her, with her image on. And they, the interesting part is that throughout the, the late 20th century, we've come to know more about her story. It was through her compassion and her kindness, her humility, her understanding, her patience with her own people, even in the midst of their disagreements, even in the midst of their struggle, even in the midst of, of trying to come to some form of equilibrium amongst her tribes, that she still retained her faith. People of God, life is not easy. Uh, a few years ago, I wouldn't even have seen myself standing before you today. Um, struggles, trials, different things have come my way or different things have come all of our ways. And we have, to, we have to take what God gives us. We have to take what God allows our path to be and embrace what God has, has put before us. Sometimes it's a bitter pill to swallow. Um, I know in reflecting on my call and my discernment process, um, there's some things that, that I don't want to accept. There's some things that I don't want to have to put off or I have to, uh, di you know, distinguish or, you know, walk away from. And there's some things that I just have to grapple with and I finally accept and I finally, when you finally accept God's call and God's will for your life it's not going to be easy God never called us to an easy walk with him God called us into a personal relationship with him and just as Molly Bryant here we see that it was her loyalty and her her strive toward justice in her community that pushed her, that drew her in deeper into her faith, deeper into her understanding of, of who actually owned the native land. When we recognize that it is God himself that owns us, lives with us, walks with us, we only can embrace and just push into God's Grace. I know I'm probably repeating myself, but I'm, I, f I feel compassion when, even though the struggles of life, even though the struggles of Molly's life were real, so must, so too our struggles are real towards us. Sometimes it even breaks us. But when we mend ourselves together, we come together and we become true lovers of God and true understanding of God's grace and his will for our life. We learn to respect the dignity of each other and we learn to find peace within ourselves. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you would stand together and let us read the Apostles' Creed.
I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered for the cross of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For all Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your slave be held upon all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Creating us clean hearts, O God. The colic of the day, maker and lover of all creation who didst imbue Molly Bryant with the gifts of justice and loyalty and didst make her a wise and prudent clan mother in the household of the Mohawk nation. Draw us also toward the goal of our faith that we may at the last attain the full dignity of our nature in our true native land, where with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who liveth and reigneth with one God in glory everlasting. Amen. And the colic for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you. But remember that we are all walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for admissions. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of, of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church. That in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A colic for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord. To know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trust in, in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we invite you to pray aloud or in your hearts for those that are in need and those that are suffering. 
for these Philippians. John, Lisa, Jim, Dan, Joe, Ann, Gene Smith, Vaughn, Jan Evers, Faye Hollingsworth, Nancy Scott, John Myers. For the family members of, the, of our Philippians, Betty Williams, Bonnie Allen, Oliver De, De Fernez, Cindy and Dale Mullins, Beth and Gerald Greer, Joey Keith Kelsey and Walker Reed, Charles Aikens, Kent Slaughter, and Angelisa Jorgensen, Stanley Slaughter, Cindy Briggs, Kim and Addie, Liam Valetti, Amy Mullins, and Michael. For our community, Jamie Dick Dixon, Fred Ingram, Tom Rice, Aaron, Faye Jones, Kara Bailey, Stacy Adams. For those that are serving in the armed forces, Teddy Duckworth, Anderson Turpin, Thomas bon Boney, Nathan Kitchen, and Mark Ross. For the departed, Bob Evers and his family. For these Philippians celebrating birthdays this week, Ann Smithson, Robert Benson, and Anderson Boozy. For these Philippians celebrating anniversaries this week, Linda and Rusty Smith. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, we your worthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and love and kindness to us and to all of you. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all of the blessings of this life. But above all, we bring for love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up yourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The prayer of Christostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace to this time that one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be blessed for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank, Thank you, God. God.